Hello, hello, hello. We're at 1685 Solano Avenue. This is Freeman Sullivan, Clark Sullivan. Down here on assignment for KPFA. Little signs of negative or uh, neighborhood protests. I'm glad everybody's watching. Maybe. Anyway, uh, uh, so we uh, 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 How are you doing tonight? I got some hot cider over there now. Oh. Would you like some? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Here, sure. I haven't drank out of this. Oh, okay, thanks. thanks. Hot cider for it's a little chilly out here this evening. Uh, we're here uh, supporting the tenants of 1685 Solano Avenue in the city of Berkeley uh, who are received eviction notices even though that they paid their rent faithfully over the years. Hey, how you doing? I'm working with a new camera tonight because I dropped my other one on the bus yesterday. Yeah, it was rather unfortunate. I got into an argument with some Palestinian students because they didn't want to meet a live stream. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you found each other. And I had to. Uh, so, of course, we're going to. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Oh, hey. Thanks, everybody, for watching us. Um, and so, I guess that we can actually do the live stream. Yeah, I think we can just do the live stream. Is that what it's I got my other camera for as well. Hey, Marco. How are you doing? Glad you're watching. This is just a small protest. I got like a bunch of things going on the screen at once. It's the only problem with the Facebook app I don't like. The screen gets a little crowded. Alright, I'll be ready. Thanks for being here, Bunker. Yeah. 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 The, uh, nice to see all the activists coming out from the East yeah. in Berkeley here. Uh, a lot of familiar faces. Well, the nice thing is, the nice thing that we have about living in Berkeley is that we try to stick up for each other. People in Berkeley are looking proud too. I know. Everywhere, every part. I don't think this is going to be as militant, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I try to I try to explain to these kids. You know, it's a real world, dude. And uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to live stream you, but you know, I do have a right to do so. And if you're going to go to a demonstration, you don't want your picture to be taken. You really consider buying a, a bandana or yeah, a mask. Yeah, exactly. Right, and you're yeah. talking about you have a kapaya there that you're wearing that could be very easily wrapped around your face. I mean, that's what they're for, okay? And they just didn't get it. And I could complain to the um, to the chancellor's office about it, you know, because you know, I'm just covering. I just wanted to cover a story, you know, and like and like. I have a lot of Palestinian friends and followers, and they would like to have seen their students on campus protesting. Yeah. Because it makes them, you know, because they you know, cost them a lot of money to send their kids to school. Just like anywhere else, right? Yeah. And it was a moment to be proud, not to be scared. And uh, they just didn't get it, you know. Like, and, but it pissed me off. Because I tend to, I tend to be, uh, I tend to, you know, if I give in to one person, with live streaming a lot of times. Yeah. Well then, you know, like to me I just don't feel like I have been sticking up for the audience enough or Yeah, exactly. Right. You don't realize the, the amplification that like, you know, yeah. 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 
Uh, it is difficult to like get meet, meet everyone's needs, especially in a public place where like usually the cops are filming as well. You know, everyone's face and stuff like that. So. But what really got me was somebody from the this woman named Lona from the National Lawyers Guild. She was um, uh, she was kind of like uh, uh, stalking me and like and like writing point for the whole demonstration like she was trying to protect the demonstration and that's not what national lawyers guild people are supposed to do they're only supposed to observe and record not interfere in the course of the demonstration and see that's another thing i'm pissed off about you know it's like you don't the people aren't trained properly and they're uh you know the media is, is like, you know, it's you know, such a wonderful tool for us to be able to amplify what we're doing and whatnot. Sure. But with all the uh, response and militarization of the state and the pushback, you know, it makes people turn on themselves and push on things. Yeah, yeah. Clark, I gotta get that. I was trying to do my live thing today, totally messed it up. I didn't feel confident at all. Yeah. One of the students will press. All together. Okay, I'm gonna check in with Benny. Okay, it's good talking so, to you. Hey. All right. Yes. Yeah, you'll get you'll get the hang of it once you learn it. You get a grip. Hi, I understand you're from KPFA. Yes, I'm Rick Lewis. I'm the director of the Bay Area Community Land Trust. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Introduce myself. Anything um, that you want to add to what's um, happening with the cases here? Um, do you feel like? Uh, that you have a chance uh, against the landlord here in court? Um, you know, uh, fortunately, my associate, uh, uh, Miranda, is taking the lead on this. Uh, but our mission, of course, is to uh, make sure that we help, um, you know, forestall displacement. Uh, and this is a, a pretty classic case of... Uh, a group of wealthy investors who are, um, you know, are forcing out a group of uh, low and moderate income people in order to make a make a, a buck, make a, a, a big buck. Yeah, market. I understand. Um, How much do you think this property is worth in the market? Um, well, the interesting thing is two markets. There's a a market if it were sold. Uh, just as rental housing, right. but of course they're ellicing the building, which means they're going out of the rental business and they're going to uh, sell it most likely as a tenant in common, which on a 13-unit building is really an infeasible type of, uh, of uh, ownership. You know, the tenants in common was really de designed for a small group of people who know each other and want to buy perhaps a duplex together. A 13-unit building, it's just, it's likely to be a nightmare for the new tenants. Okay. But, um... Not luxury condominiums? Well, uh, fortunately, Berkeley has a pretty strong, uh, uh, legislation that makes it very difficult to convert to, um, to condominiums. So, uh, what they often do as an interim step is to turn it into a tenant in common, uh, Berkeley only allows a certain number of units to convert to condo each year. So okay. uh, people who form TICs then get in line to see who who gets to convert to the condominium, condominium, which makes them value even more. But we've heard that the owner believes that uh, they can get something in the neighborhood of $600,000 a unit even as the tenants in common. Now, so that's 7.2 million. Not, don't know, but, you know, as rental property, uh, probably somewhere around $300,000 per unit. Okay, so, so about half, half of that that's much. That's the profit that they're looking on at, at making. So, um, you know, we are really hoping that by making it uh, an issue, um, a public issue, um, Something will change. Can, you know, we've made an offer to the owners to purchase a building at a reasonable price. Right. We haven't offered a specific price because they have not even 
Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Could you say your name again, please? Rick Lewis. Okay, thank you, Rick. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Clark Sullivan. Me too. Right. Yeah, I'm live streaming. So you're going out there live on the web on my Facebook uh, page. So it'll be available. Um, I'll send a link to uh, one of the people, uh, the site, one of the organizers, to me his business card. So if you want to watch it again for laps, you can. But this is going to, hopefully, uh, part of this will make its way onto the airwaves tonight the news or maybe later on maybe tomorrow morning we've been fighting um, this eviction this eviction for a year a year and it's been pretty messy I mean I don't know if that's going to be gone the speakers are talking but All right. what's oh, yeah. so great about tonight is that so our, li our lawyers are trying to push back right against this what is called the owner's right to evict everyone which is called the Ellis Act right that's because they want to get out of rent but what I feel and what I think people may agree with is that you have a right, you also have a responsibility. Responsibility, it seems to me, is that if you have done a good job caring for the building and caring for tenants, then you have a right, of course, to get out of rent. But if you have not done that and you're mainly interested in money tracks, then it's not so good that people have the right to come in and buy and then flip and leave. So, we didn't quite know what to do now to continue to stick up for ourselves. So we came to the process very large organization that came to us. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what to do. That's how why all these people are here tonight. We couldn't have done it on our own. Good, good. So the community does care. Oh, absolutely. How amazing. And we care because, I mean, it's pervasive. The problem is pervasive from the smallest to the street to on the streets mm -hmm. right, to the big ranches to the big all of it. And I'm hoping that we can get solutions that involve everybody in a way where it's possible. Right. I would love to see that we can start giving recognition to those investors who join these sorts of causes where the land trust is trying to buy out a building or buy a building so the tenants can stay. Right. And it's a great thing. They get to feel good. Everybody is so grateful. Yeah. Problem solved. If that happens, we have many more problems to solve. So thank you all for being here. And uh, could you repeat your name again, please? Peggy Magellan. Right, and I've lived here for three years. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Nice tenants that live here. See your ordinary folks. Not two people are... Yeah, thank you there, Mary. Okay. Just answering some text here. Oh, good turnout. About 20, 30 people showed up so far. So that's pretty good for a Friday evening and people showed up to support other tenants. This is part of a, a broader class struggle that goes on, like um, our last speaker, Peggy was speaking about was that um, it's going to take a struggle of all classes and all fronts to make housing into a reality. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> hey, what's up? Let's see if we can do a shot of everybody here. There you go. Thanks everybody that's here so far in the protest. Hi, Aiden. Hey, not too bad. You have anything you'd like to say about housing rights here in Berkeley? Well, the last thing I saw was that the Bay Area Community Services backs uh, 
had failed in its promise to be 75% effective. Right. Uh, there was a news coverage about it being 50% effective um, with many people going back onto the streets after. Oh, you're talking about the Bay Area? Yeah, the stair centers, specifically. Yeah. Right. And so um, I know that uh, certain council members are thinking about multiple service resource centers in areas such as Peoples Park, and I think it, we just need an environmental review before we do any more of those things. I think there's better ways to help people remain in housing as well as uh, guarantee housing. And I think the city should really focus on a public public option, start working with nonprofits uh, specifically, and uh, develop ways that people don't have to compete in the private market. Um, all those things are relatively easy, and I hope that uh, more events like this will help people establish practices where we can all be housed. And so, yeah, thank you. Okay, Aiden Hill, thank you. You guys made it. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. How you doing, Betsy? Good. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing any lights or not. I suggested at the uh, BACLT meeting yeah, it's good. And now we got a nice crowd here. I think housing is an issue that touches every one of us. Yep. And uh, they are safe. Well, they're not safe yet. One thing we uh, so this building here was built in 1964, and it was last renovated in the 70s, according to one of the tenants. So uh, um, I noticed that there needed, like, it looks like there needed small jobs at work that could be, you know, that were needed on the building. Architecturally, it's really not. That's striking of a building, kind of like California boxy, and with all the original windows. Uh, the building uh, is, is valued between 3.6 and 7.2 million dollars. Uh, uh, that's depending on who you. Uh, uh, you know, there was two two uh, quotes that were given. Uh, one was for tenants, and one was for the for uh, speculative people. Um, ah, there's a mayor, uh, Jesse Aragorn. I guess we'll go over and talk to him in a few minutes, a minute or two. So, Mayor Jesse. Yep, Berkeley Tenants Union. Just to let you know, um, it's not going to be an action pack. There's not going to be any marches, I don't think, today. Oh, I think that was the biggest action right there was uh, getting the duct tape to work properly. So not a whole lot going on just yet. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm good for now. Okay. Thank you, though. I got to have both my hands working now. Yeah, it kind of feels like a little party going on here. So we're going to have some speakers here in just a few minutes. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything... Uh, don't hesitate to ask me yeah, exactly. through okay. the chat, and I'll do my best. Berkeley Tenants Union. All right. So, Betsy, 
Come here and talk to me. What's going on this week uh, in terms of housing actions? Well, um, since that one that you were sending out, um, the, the uh, moms. Why don't you stand in front of the camera? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. Oh, okay. Uh, it's official. Well, more than there are more events this week than I can keep up with. Here. Okay. Well, why don't you start? Great. But uh, the moms, uh, moms for housing in Oakland. Um, just they took over a house that's been sitting empty. It's owned by a corporate real estate company that's moved into Oakland to after the foreclosure crisis. So they took over the house and they're being adventurous. Uh, on uh, Thursday, they did that on I think Monday or Tuesday and really kicked things off. And they've got some national press. On Thursday, there was a. Uh, Kind of like bringing muffins and apples to the staff of the housing department and the planning department in Oakland because uh, they apparently don't have enough staff or time to collect the impact fees for the housing trust fund or the equivalent in Oakland that all the developers with all this, you know, many numbers of housing units. So EBHO organized and other people organized and brought muffins and basically to put a little fire under the department in Oakland to collect the money so it can be used for affordable housing the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Is there uh, anything happening tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what's going on tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is the big march in Mosswood Park. All right. Uh, and, uh, Starts at 12? Starts at 12. Mosswood Park? three, I think. Okay. And in the last part, there's a march to a luxury condominium. So I'm going to assume that event's the big, like, both debrief and make a lot of noise, everybody together. And then um, I know there's a... An event on Sunday as well? I don't know about that okay. event. Like I said, there's, well, there's way wrong. more than I can keep track of. Yeah. I know that LA, there's actually events going on there I, all week. Because I think there's Ace is putting it on. Ace is, thank you Ace for calling us together. Right. You know, the Berkeley East Bay Grey Panthers would be here if you had Jesus call out. And I'm just going to do a little plug for our event here. Did right. You to get that? <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, I was at a member meeting, annual meeting of the Bay Area Community Land Trust and uh, heard about this event. And as part of the announcements, I announced that ACE had called this Bay Area Housing Justice Week of Action. And uh, people in the room hadn't known about that. So I'm incredibly grateful that Ronald Flannery here got the, he's one of their new board members and he's been a partner with Greg Panthers here for over a year. And so we pulled it together with all these great sponsors. We've got Aiden here from the Bay Area Landless People's Alliance. I'm glad you're here. I did not want to be trying to represent this Paul. We got I know, everybody and we have showed about up. 10, 10 of our senior members of the Great Panthers. Oh. And uh, I think it's fun. So that's Betsy Thank Morris. Thanks, Clark. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Betsy Morris from the Great Panthers. Yay. I'm thinking, should I pull out my lights? There you go. Uh, yeah, this, I, this, I don't know what? if they wanted us to move inside. Oh, no, I no. Pull no out I think the lights. Yeah, pull out the uh, lights. We'll, we'll see. Right. We'll see. Me, do you want me to pull some more people? No, I'm, I'm fine. I was trying to get Jessica to do a video, but she's not oh, she's able busy. She's working. Oh, okay, she's busy too. <laughs> yeah, right. Here we go, Liz. Yeah, come on. Do you need to be in a quiet zone? Yeah, I'm good. Is that the idea? Oh, hey, nice. Good to see you. Thanks for staying. Hey, no problem. Can I sit next to you? I can show you. I can show you. If you want to see the door, I can show you the door. But I can show you a friend of ours. A friend of ours. I know one of the people. Hey Mary, I'm surprised you're still here, huh? Okay. We got a little bit of light here, so I guess we're gonna have to move up front.
Yeah, you know, as I'm looking for the front here, I'm gonna make the where are the speakers going to be? You want to get any closer? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, because uh, there's enough light. Speakers here in a few moments. Start the meeting here of tenants. Uh, too short. Just hang on. Please stand by.
at East Bay Housing Organizations. Uh, it's a, <laughs> we are an organization that exists to protect uh, affordable housing opportunities for low-income communities, and we do that by fighting for tenant rights, <laughs> preservation of the housing that we already have, like this, and creating affordable housing. Another piece of the pie. Uh, if anybody here who wants to learn more about my organization, I would just direct you to our program director, Reverend Sophia DeWitt. Yeah, please come forward, Reverend. And you can get information here. You can get information from Sophia about uh, how to join our Berkeley committee. Uh, I'd also like to just take a moment here in the beginning, if folks will bear with me, to thank some people who helped make this happen. And I wanted to start with uh, the tenants themselves here at 1685 Solano. Are folks not able to hear? No, it's not on. Is it power turned off? Right. Also better. Sorry, folks. I'm going to switch to the bullhorn. Security that I think it often doesn't get seen, and, and letting us into their home and, and letting us, uh, you know, help support them in, in staying here. Um, I'm going to introduce in a moment uh, some of the tenants who are going to tell their story. Um, I just want to thank two before we get started uh, the Great Panthers, especially <laughs> Becky Morris over here is the only woman who bled for this event. <laughs> I want to thank Miranda and Rick at the Bay Area Community Land Trust and all the members of the Bay Area Community Land Trust. They're fighting to keep this place permanently affordable. Uh, I want to thank to Ace Action for calling this week of housing justice action. I hope everybody will come out in solidarity tomorrow at Mosswood Park in Oakland. This is the last uh, chance to support the Housing Justice Week of Actions. If you want more information about that, uh, we have flyers over at this table. Uh, just real quick, I want to thank Berkeley Tenants Union yeah. and Matthew Lewis, Julia Cato. And I can't thank everybody, but um, just a shout out to all of you for coming out and everybody who helped make this happen. I, it was a real whirlwind the last week and just coordinating with folks and there was so much support for this. I hope that this could be a catalytic moment for housing justice in Berkeley. Uh, you know, this is called the Rally for Housing Justice Now because what do we want? Housing justice. Housing justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Housing justice. When do we want it? Now. That's right. All right, so we're going to get started with Peggy from <laughs> this building, 1685 Solana. I want to invite all the tenants, Joe and Olga, Mami, Ko, Kim, anybody here who can come stand in solidarity with Peggy. Please come up, folks. Let's try the mic. Testing, 
Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear it? Yeah. First of all, I am, and I'm sure we all are, blown away. Early when we were going through this, someone said something about, well, maybe we want to do a protest effort, well, or a demonstration or a mediation effort. But we were kind of discouraged because, well, you know, you may get four or five people out there. And then a couple miracles have happened. First miracle that came was that the land trust, East Bay Community Land Trust came in with this offer of helping to buy the building. Ace came to us with Ronald, with East Bay with Lantra, saying, we would like you to have an event yeah. at your building yeah. as part of this week. And look around, this is what they brought to us. So we're so grateful. All right, so just as a disclaimer, I have lived in this building for three years, but I did move out October 30th. I was having congestion from flu here. I'm used to living out in the sunshine of all the And I didn't really want to deal with asbestos on top of that. And I really didn't want to deal anymore. I'm still here, still dealing, but I didn't want to deal with the abuse that's been happening in this building. All right, so with that, I'm gonna read my story, our story. I'm here to speak mainly about the experience we in this building have had in regard to the Tinsdale Ellis Act eviction. The Ellis Act is a state law that gives owners the right to exit from the rental business. We certainly agree with this right, but as with every right, there is also responsibility. In the case of the Ellis Act, we feel that in order to end renting and thereby evict residents, owners should have had a good record of care for the building and the tenants of that building during their ownership. As you would hear, in our case, this has certainly not happened. I've had the goosebumps the whole time I'm reading the goosebumps. Another term you will hear tonight is renovation, which has been coined to describe when owners do so much invasive and abusive renovation that it literally drives tenants out of the building. With this rally, our interest is to heighten public awareness about housing and also to encourage a way to work with the building owners and not against them. So, 15 months ago on this very popular street, housing injustice began and has continued to be perpetrated on the residents of this 13 unit apartment building. In August of 2018, we were suddenly served two owner buyout offers, which quickly became the threat of an Ellis Act eviction for all. Including for the 95 year old resident who had lived here for 50 years. Wow. Also, three other uh, individuals considered as elders, 62 or older, two teachers, and nine other younger business employees, and one business owner. The realtor involved told us that the absentee landlord investors who bought the building from the caring prior owners in 2008 intended to turn the building into a TIC, a Tenants in Common, which is a joint ownership of the building, a ownership of one mortgage for the building, with decisions made by those who would then live in the 13 units. Doing this would allow the owners to exit rent control, bypass restrictive laws for condo conversions, and make an estimated $7 million profit on the TIC sale of the fully renovated building. Tenants in two of the units took the very low buyout offers in November and December of 2018. The rest of us have tried to fight off this owner action, supported by the lawyers from the City of Berkeley Eviction Defense Center and one private lawyer. However, efforts for our tenant team looking for solutions and our lawyers have been hampered since little is on the books that can prevent or stop the state owner rights, Ellis Act law, and the onslaught that can and did begin here. All right, do you need it shorter? Am I going on too much? No! All right, here we are. In the April of this year, we were officially served the LSAC papers, and at the end of May, they started renovations. And they were huge renovations of the five empty units, the garage, the hallways, with as many as 18 
wonderfully nice Latino workers, workers here in the building, but all at once. Some of the work, this was some of the initial bad work. Unchanted exploratory drilling on decks, which filled the involved tenant units with clouds of suspect dust and scary suspect white dust from the sheetrock removal from empty units, filling all the hallways. You know where you find asbestos? Oh. In between in between the sheets of sheep rock. Yep. That's where really the um, mixture is for, for asbestos. All right, so the hallways were white footprint records of the day's work. No notices uh, announced the plan renovation, nor the fact was it shared that there was lead asbestos in the building, which later we learned they knew because it was disclosed in the prior lease. Wow. The tenant research team privately took samples, but the do a good enough job, we didn't find any uh, toxins, so the pounding and drilling. And the city never, it was never checked to see whether or not the contractors had certification to work with toxins. Suddenly on August 12, 2019, Count OSHA arrived. Someone had anonymously called them in and it wasn't us. All the work stopped. The workers were informed and the testing result, result did show the presence of asbestos, silica, and lead. However, no one came and no actions were taken to protect tenants. After the prior year of research, we, the tenant team, three or four of us, made our way to the East Bay Air Quality Management District, who will inspect the tenant well-being if they can see the work underway. But since August 12th, the building has remained the same. Workers will come in. So the contractors now have gone for certification, which was never checked before the work was started. They come in with a mask on and a full body white often. Tenants have nothing. And we've been living in this since May. So now the most recent attack was an owner demand that all tenants over 62 years of age relocate within 30 days or four months so work could proceed. A gargantuan demand from which many of this age would not return, even though the LS Act had guaranteed those over 62 years. We saw this as another calculated rent eviction. This was followed by a relocation demand for all the tenants. Okay, so the lawyers have tried, we've been trying, but, and we've been asking for mediation with the rent board, but the owners have not responded until two weeks ago. Monday, Tenants go into mediation with our lawyers and the owners, and we will see how it then proceeds. Last. Uh, uh, untimely for our wishes, our this month now 96 year old resident permanently relocated yesterday. <laughs> Her good nature and health were greatly put upon by the ongoing, endless pressures from all that was going on here. Yeah. Going forward, we hope that through mediation, the owners can be invited into recognition for investment approaches that are good for residents, good for businesses, and a diverse, healthy, and a community of well-being centeredness. So that's our story. Thanks so much, Peggy, for being vulnerable with us and telling your story. That's, I, I think all these tenants are just so brave and uh, I think, you know, they've been asked to, to vacate the premise and, and they're staying here and they're, uh, you know, they're an example of uh, how we can come together and be brave ourselves and so inspired by these folks, all these folks. And I hope that folks will take some time to send an email to people who have control over this situation. Hope that people got the chance to sign in for ways that you can support these tenants moving forward. And I hope that we win. Well, what's happening here is awful. Uh, but uh, it's not just happening here. It's happening all across the city of Berkeley, all across the Bay Area. Housing insecurity comes at us in so many different ways and we lose affordability in so many different ways. 
I want to invite for some brief statements Julia Cato, chairwoman of the Berkeley Tenants Union. She's going to speak a little bit to how these issues impact across the whole city. Thank you. Is it working? Okay. Costa Hawkins has to go. The elephant has to go. Both of these acts were designed to subvert rent controls in our cities and in our state. Costa Hawkins, as I read online today from some real estate writer, was designed specifically to take rent control units out of rent control. And it was a whole piece on how to do that. As you know, the Hawkins has dramatically decreased the amount of uh, rent control units we already have. And we, in, uh, the Ellis Act is continuing to decimate it. That's what this eviction is all about. That's what all Ellis Act evictions are about. So that's why we have to stop it. And if we can't repeal it right away, then we've got to amend it and amend it till it, it has no teeth left. <laughs> the Ellis Act is easily abused by landlords, partly because there's no real enforcement. The law says if they want to go out of business, then they have to leave their rental business, they have to leave their building in fee for five years, at least that's one of the conditions. Well, this is insane in an era where we talk constantly about the housing crisis, that we make it legal for buildings to sit empty for five years. What kind of insanity is that? Now, that sounds like I'm defending the landlords, but I'm not. <laughs> Um, anyway, they don't usually stay in five years because they cheat. And the, and the reason they cheat is that there's very little enforcement. Nobody goes around inspecting it. I mean, cities and counties, no, nobody has the, the manpower or the people power, I should say, to do that. So if anyone does it, it's the old tenants that come by regularly to see if, if anyone's living in the building they've been forced out of. So what BTU wants to do is get volunteers to follow up on the Ellis Act evictions in Berkeley. It's not that hard. We just have to drive by once in a while and keep tab. And we can get a list of all the buildings that have been Ellis and when they, you know, for how long they have to stay in the so that's one thing BTU is doing, and we need volunteers, so you know how to find us. We're online, and we have a phone number. So please get in touch and help us do this very necessary thing. You see what's happening to these people here. It's happening in lots of places. And this is a particular situation, which I am not free to go into. But anyway, what I want to say is, because the Alice Act is so easily abused. It is a very popular mechanism for getting uh, rid of long-term tenants. The other thing I want to do is to persuade you to, and your organization, to write Governor Newsom and ask him to extend the state of the emergency currently in beyond January 1st, 2020. If you read Penal Code 396, you will discover that the state of emergency offers all kinds of protections to tenants that are not in existence when the state of emergency is gone. One of the things it offers is vacancy control. That means you can't raise the rent to market value when somebody moves out. Also, you can't evict anyone for the sole purpose of 
getting someone new in and raising the rent. It also caps the rent at 10%. Now you might say, well, what about 1482? Isn't that going to kick in? Well, it is. But first of all, 1482 doesn't apply to a whole bunch of people. You have to live in a building that's at least 15 years old, for one thing. And there are a whole bunch of other requirements. I've got seven pages of how to navigate 1482 with several flow charts. It's not a simple bill. And because so many people are going to be left out for a long time, it's important that we offer these protections that the state of emergency declarations offer. So I'm asking everybody in this organization to please write to Mr. and ask him to extend the state of emergency. I mean, I think this housing crisis is that everybody acknowledges constitutes a state of emergency. I think that thousands and thousands and thousands of homeless people in our communities constitute a state of emergency. So if you want to, uh, I'm going to try to get a sample letter on our website within the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, if you want any information about writing the governor, you can call me to you or email us or find us on Facebook. Thank you. And if you want to join TTU, um, either just in general as a member or specifically to work on the LS Act of and stuff, Come talk to me. Um, I have our sign, I have our signing form loaded up here. It'll get you on our email list and everything. Our next meeting is on December 14th. This is Matthew Lewis, our secretary. Going to work with, and they're powerful people, and add your power to them, and then we got some momentum, right? Um, I we just have a couple more speakers, and I, this is really important. I think we want to just scale up another level, right? So <laughs> we've heard from the tenants themselves, we've heard from the tenants union uh, about these these rent abuses and, and ways that uh, reforms that we so badly need. I think just to highlight a little bit. Uh, the, the, the longer term solutions that can really protect us from these kinds of extractive investments and um, you know luxury developments and the idea is we can control our own land and I just want to invite thank you <laughs> I want to invite uh, my good friend Miranda to speak to some of these issues.
Housing is never resold for profit. Residents have control over their own stable, affordable, dignified housing. They have the opportunity to steward this building for the next residents and the next, all of whom will enjoy the same stability, affordability, and dignity forever. That is the model that the Bay Area Community Land Trust works in, and for over a decade, our incredible residents and members, many of whom are here tonight, have been demonstrating that another way is possible. We are so glad that the City of Berkeley, through its affordable housing framework and other programs, is ready to make an explicit commitment to supporting community land trusts, recognizing that this is a model that keeps people housed and keeps our housing affordable. That it's a model that because it works against the speculative market, lets us be in right relationship with the land, with our housing, and with one another. That's right. This framework will soon be before the City Council and needs all of our support to be approved. We are so grateful for the City's support and we still need more of it. We need the money and the procedures in place now to meet this City's urgent need for community controlled housing. The owners of this building are well aware that we're that we are waiting, that we are ready to work with them to transfer ownership of this building to these residents and this community. So far, all we've heard is silence. So, so thank you again for being here with us tonight to make some noise. Today, my greatest hope is that they go ahead and get back to us and let us know they're ready to do the right thing, to let these residents who have been stewarding this building and watching out for one another literally for decades to let them take the reins. Thank you so much. If you'd like to join our work uh, and help Stuart, Ber Stuart Berkeley uh, through the Community Land Trust, you can talk to me or my colleague Rick Lewis in the yellow jacket about, about becoming a member. Thanks so much, Miranda. I just, you know, we, it's worth noting one of the, the objectives of the League of Housing Justice Actions is to draw attention to root causes of the, the housing crisis in the Bay Area. And it's also a chance to uh, compel uh, people with power over this situation to, to choose a side and let us know where they stand. And I want to uh, just recognize that we have tonight Mayor Jesse Aragin with us. And Council Member Sophie Klein. Great allies of our work and, and great stewards of affordability. And I'm oh, sorry. And also Councilwoman Kate Harrison. All right. And Councilwoman Kate Harrison. And I just want to invite you guys up if you want to say a couple words. Thank you. So I want to just acknowledge uh, we have a couple of rent board commissioners here. Rent board commissioner Sully Alpert and <laughs> rent board commissioner Nico Trigger. And as we know, the Red Board is one of our last lines of defense to keep housing affordable in our city, as we're seeing increasing pressure to drive up rents and force that tenants. I'll just say for myself, I'm a renter. If it wasn't for rent control, I would not be able to live in the city, be able to serve this community as mayor. And so it's so essential that we not only maintain essential protections, but strengthen those protections during this housing emergency that we're facing. And I want to thank the, the, the residents of this building for organizing and for speaking out and for fighting back. You have my commitment that we are going to turn up the heat on the owners. We're going to do We're going to bring our 
our city attorney involved, we'll bring our housing code enforcement involved, we'll do everything we can to bring every single bit of pressure we can on these landlords for the egregious violations, uh, the um, disrespect that they've shown you, and the decrease of your quality of life. I think coming together like this is so essential to not only raise awareness of the fact that even in Berkeley, which has had rent control since 1980, which has some of the strongest rental protections in the entire state of California, that state laws like the LSF, state laws like Costa Hawkins, uh, drive a huge stake in those laws. And so while we need to work to strengthen protections locally and defend the rights of tenants in our city and work to prevent the displacement of people in our city, we need to march on Sacramento and call on our legislators to repeal Costa Hawkins and to repeal the LSF. So, um, you have my commitment to work with you to, to, to put as much pressure as we can and hopefully work with the land trust to see if we can make this possible to acquire this building and keep it permanently affordable. And I want to thank the land trust for all you do to keep housing affordable and to keep people in their homes. So that's me. Thank you. I'm Sophie Hahn. I'm very proud to represent this district. And I am so grateful that all of you came here this evening to stand in solidarity with these renters who have been so abused by this landlord. A lot of people don't think District 5 has vulnerable residents and people living on fixed incomes, but we do. They're everywhere. And landlords who are trying to exploit them and, and make a profit by kicking out long-term residents and rent-controlled residents are everywhere in Berkeley, and we have to stand up to it everywhere. I, I was very excited and, and, and distressed when Peggy came to meet with me, I don't know, four months ago, five months ago, when this just was starting to unfold. And the story that she told me was so outrageous that within 24 hours, had activated the city attorney, the rent board, um, and working with her private attorney, the attorney that they've hired, to, uh, to help them in this situation, and really start trying to problem solve. And very quickly, the land trust came up as our best viable solution to saving this building for affordable rents. And so we were delighted that uh, we called them up and they were immediately interested and look where we are now. This is what happens when all the parties work towards the same goal, which is to find a way to keep this housing that has been affordable, affordable forever. So I just wanna, I wanna thank Peggy. It's been incredible to watch her go from a, uh, you know, a, a renter enjoying her life to an activist um, and really leading the charge here and making sure that this, this housing is saved and that all of you who have encircled and, and embraced this cause and are supporting her and supporting the land trust and really making this happen. We've got to do more of this. There's needs all over the community. We have to stand up. We have to stand up for affordable housing. Every little project, every big policy, everything we do. So thank you so much, and I, I look forward to seeing you many more times as we fight to keep this housing. We will work internally to do that, but we need you, and we are so grateful that you're here today fighting for these tenants. Thank you. We have an electoral power. We have community power. Tonight we're building community power, and that's really awesome, I think. Um, just to speak to that, uh, or rather to follow up to that, I wanted to invite, this is going to be really quick, uh, a spontaneous testimony from a tenant who is being involuntarily displaced from 1685 Solano. I want to invite Neil just to share a quick testimony, and then we're going to have some beautiful singing for the Occupy Singers. And then we have just one more speaker, that we're going to close out our concert. Neil, did you want to come up and just say really quickly? Uh, First off, thank you for being here. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give your neighbor a pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a teacher at Cragmont Elementary School, and um, I'm 
I'm speaking to the mayor, to the council people. I'm one of your foot soldiers. I'm out there um, on the front lines every day, and um, this has compromised my ability to be a teacher. And um, looking at the alternatives that exist for me right now, there there really aren't any good alternatives um, currently in the. Berkeley housing market. I can't. Buy, I can't afford to buy a house. I can't afford to whatever I, is out there is just not available at the same quality that I have now. And honestly, it's really compromised my mental health. And um, it's been a real, really challenging thing. I was very torn about coming up here, but um, I want to share that um, you know I I have a meditation practice that's the only, literally the only thing that's getting me through. The day, but um, it's just uh, uh, very challenging, very stressful. So thank you for your support, and I, I look forward to the support from the mayor, the the, the lawyer, the, um, and putting pressure directly on the owners to get them to uh, move forward in, in support uh, in a in a in a just capacity. Thank you for listening. Thank you. It resonates. It really resonates. And I just want to make time here for us to kind of feel that together and introduce the acapella singers. Acapella. Acapella.
There you go, acapella. Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, thank you so much for the acapella. Uh, they're fighting sickness, and they came out tonight, and I think they lifted it so high. Um, we just have one more thing to discuss before we close our program tonight, and we hope that folks will hang around a little while, talk about your experiences of housing insecurity. Talk about how that resonates with you. Have some cider with us. Send some emails to people with power. Sign up for ongoing action alerts. Uh, so we don't need folks to, to leave right after this, but we do want to just bring up uh, three more amazing women. They, these, these folks are going to speak to how all of these issues are the other side of the houseless crisis that most breaks our hearts. I think this is the best way we could close the program tonight. So I want to invite up Andrea Hansen, Treshana, and Sandra. Thank you so much for having me. Ronald asked me to sort of do a synthesis, or to do a synthesis of what we talked about tonight. And we talked about tenants' rights, tenants' unions, land trust, dignity, nonprofit control, control over our living spaces. Currently, I spend all of my time at the Seabreeze and the I 80 encampments in Berkeley. And my experience is once you've crossed over from being a tenant, life changes. The idea of dignity and control no longer exists because you have to follow certain rules. You're given opportunities because people believe that you deserve them, not that you need them. Excuse me. Right. It's been a long day. Thank you. Yeah, we picked up trash. And so, it's so important to fight now because when you cross over to homelessness, what I've observed is that in the other world, the house and the world of tenants, homeowners and tenants, don't treat the homeless like they were formerly housed or formerly tenants. They don't treat them like people, but there's a difference when you don't own property. But within their community, it's extraordinarily communal. It's very powerful and they have to take care of one another. Before I came here, I visited with a woman who's in her late 60s. She doesn't have a tent. She sleeps on a couch in the middle of the street. I'm trying to get her a tarp. So, What I want to say is that right now, this is such an amazing experience. It's so out of what I'm used to. No one comes and visits and sings in the homeless encampment. No one comes and talks about housing as a human right with people who are disabled, drug addicts, mental disabilities, who've already crossed over into homelessness. What I learned staying in the encampment is that there are no visitors. People drop off food and they leave. And so fight as hard as you can right now because when you cross over and you become homeless, it is so extraordinarily difficult to get back because all of society isn't going to treat you like you're a part of this community. We can say that we do, but we don't especially not in Berkeley. I've been out there where they spit on us, they yell at us, they give the homeless rotten food, they throw their trash out around them, people are, are preying on them. And so I would ask each and every person here, I would beg you, call your representatives. If you see someone homeless on the street, help them, a senior citizen, advocate, just visit. Dignity is a human right. We did a GoFundMe, we gave out 65 tents. I got 10-person tents, and then I'm going to be done. I want to tell you about this. 
When you're on the street, you have to compromise. You don't have this community. You have to survive. What it meant to give each individual a tent meant escaping a compromising relationship where you could be a victim of domestic violence and all sorts of other abuse, both men and women, what you have to do on the street to survive. But to be out there, you have to be tough and have courage. So I don't, I feel more sorry for the people on the outside who don't get the opportunity to meet these courageous and brave and compassionate, amazing human beings that I get to be with. And I beg each and every one of you to think about that because from here, when you cross over, this community that you see right here, they're not there. No one's coming into the encampment at night playing guitar, and I'm not saying this as an insult, but I really want you to think about this. No one's bringing hot cider at night, and we don't have electricity, and we don't have access to a bathroom, and there's no one that's screaming and fighting for us to the mayor and to city council. There are advocates. But there's a lot of judgment. That person is deserving, that person's a drug addict, that person, oh, we're not gonna help them. Their service failed and community failed. So I ask each and every one of you today to reflect on your mindset and to look at this holistically at what this housing crisis do does when you're here versus when you cross over. And how do you help someone get back? It is just a life-altering experience. There is a certain level where you feel like um, it's not just, you know, your, your home that's been taken. On another level, it's your identity and autonomy. And ultimately, that's what we're here fighting for tonight. We're fighting for um, preserving those things as well as standing up against the stigmatization and classism that's associated with, of course, gentrification in terms of the housing crisis and what's going on right now in Berkeley. And it's, it'll take all of us as a community. You know, we're from San Francisco, but I myself, my experience was um, when our landlord increased the rent and it left my boyfriend and I homeless. Um, and yeah, so we're here with you guys all the way. Each time I was like, fuck, here we go again. <laughs> Six 